everybody, it's Chris Eads, known online as Wu Teeny, here with another Gay Gamer video podcast. Uh, I, I have a lot to talk about this week, because um, I actually took the week between Christmas and New Year's off work, something I don't usually do, um, but things have been going very well at work, and I hit my monthly goals, like, before Christmas, so I was like, let's take off Christmas to New Year's and take some power, because I have a lot of vacation days left, because I didn't take vacation a lot this year, because why I take a day off? You're just going to stay home, and I work from home, so it's, I'm not doing anything differently, except I'm just not sitting there working. But, um, I took the week off, and, uh, of course couldn't do anything, I couldn't go out and do anything, so I sat at home and watched movies and played a lot of video games, so, uh, Let's just jump right in. Uh, obviously, I've been playing a lot of Animal Crossing, because I play Animal Crossing every day, and I'm going to play Animal Crossing every day until my until I'm dead. Um, and then I hope that I can play it in the afterlife. Um, I will haunt someone's the Nintendo system in order to play Animal Crossing. Um, I have to say, I was slightly disappointed by Christmas in Animal Crossing, because um, I preferred in New Leaf how people would ask you, say, oh, I want something red, or I want furniture, or I want carpet, um, and then you'd, like, make a note of all of their requests, and then when Jingle gave you the bag, you had to figure out, like, okay, they wanted red, they, that could be this or that, but they wanted carpet, so that's definitely this, so that'll be that, and it's a puzzle, and it was kind of, I liked that, it was a little something to do. Um, in New Horizons, Jingle gives you the bag, and you just walk around, and you hand out presents, and they're just excited to get a present from Santa, and they don't even open it, so you don't even know what it is. And after you do that, you get some rewards from Jingle for doing his job for him. Then you can go around and exchange presents with your neighbors from you. And so I went and did that because I wanted to do that, but you don't get anything out of that. You can wrap up toys or whatever, I guess, and they'll just give you toys back. So you're just basically, there's like, whatever, those five or six different toys that the, the store's been selling, and you just exchange those amongst yourselves. And it's like, what was the point of that? So, I mean, it was just, it was cute. So it was something to do, but it was just like busy work, and there was no, like, anything to it. Um, New Year's was, of course, New Year's. There isn't anything to do on New Year's. There's no activities or anything. You just bring in the New Year. Um, and it just looked nicer, because there's the graphics are better, and the fireworks were lovely, and everybody was all dressed up with the little hats and outfits, and it was very cute. Um, I have also been playing a lot of Uncharted 2, um, and I saved my game and saw that I was like 85% through the game, and I went, wait, what? So I'm clearly at the end of the game, so uh, I won't really talk about that in this episode, because I think next episode I can give my final thoughts on Uncharted 2. Uh, I think I'm that close to the end. Um, the other game that I played was Ghost of Tsushima, because my friend Cam recently got the game and was enjoying it, and he wanted to try Legends Mode, which is the co-op online multiplayer. Now, as you know from watching my previous episodes, I don't do multiplayer, really. Um, but it's co-op, so that's better. Like, I certainly won't do Deathmatch, but I was like, it's co-op multiplayer, I'm playing with someone I know, that's fine. So, um, he just did give me a heads up, he said, you do have to, like, start the mode and pick one of the classes, and then we can play together. So I was like, okay, that's fine, we'll play in the evening, and during the day, I'll just play it and get it ready to go. I went to the main menu, put the disc back in, went to the main menu, and it was like, okay, uh, you have to go to the PlayStation Store to get it. And I went, oh, God, well, good thing I'm giving myself plenty of time, because who knows how long it'll take to download. Turns out, the actual data was in an update that had already been downloaded and installed, because when it took me to the PlayStation Store and I said download, it said, okay, there you go, have fun. And I was like, wait, what? It was instantaneous, so there was no downloading to wait for, which was nice. You're just, like, activating it, I guess. Which is weird, because I'm like, why didn't it... I don't know why you had to do that from the PlayStation Store. It just make it part of the game, but... Whatever. Um, so, yeah. So, uh, I played through the tutorial, uh, which basically introduces you to each of the classes and their special skills and whatever. And I ended up going with Assassin, because that was what I had the most fun doing. Um... 
So, and then we played. And, um, like, each mission has, like, a, a few chapters to it, like, that you do each section, and then, um, we did a few of the, the missions. Um, it's fine. Um, it was a little sketchy because he's just started the game, so he's still learning the combat, and I haven't played the game in a while, so I've forgotten the combat, uh, so we made quite a pair. Um, but the way the multiplayer works is you're starting f almost from scratch, like, so I'm playing an assassin, so I have, like, limited skill abilities. I can't do the other things. Uh, like, I kept wanting to change my stance when I was like, oh, this guy's got a shield, let me change, oh, I can't do that. You only have the one stance. Um, I mean, I'm assuming that at some point you can get better and learn those skills, but um, right now, like at the beginning, you, you're you starting from scratch. So it was it was helpful because it wasn't as complicated, combat wasn't as complicated as it would have been if you had all of the skills. Um, so it was fine. Um, the, the problem with it is that um, the reason that I loved Ghost of Tsushima was like the story and the characters and the unbelievably gorgeous graphics. Um, so with Legends mode, there's really no story or characters. There's like enough of a premise to get you to go on these missions and as the ghosts and you're fighting the Oni and whatever. But there's no, you know, there's no storyline. It's multiplayer, online multiplayer, so it's like they're not giving you a, this rich, deep storyline that's compelling. Um, and then the graphics, while good, um, you're in a nightmare world with, like, black skies and, like, everything's dark and there's, like, floating hearts in the sky. It's creepy and weird. So, while the graphics are good, it's not exactly pretty to look at. Um, you're also not exploring stuff. It's just, it's a very linear, like, go here, here's your mission, kill these guys and do this. So, um, it's not as scenic and picturesque. So, um, it was fun, but I don't know if it's something I'm going to go back to, like, a lot. Um, but the main thing I wanted to talk about is the game that I mentioned in the last episode that I had just started, but had only played for a day, so I didn't feel that my first impressions would be accurate. At least I hoped they wouldn't be, because I hated it. Um, so, uh, and they weren't, because, um, I was able to. I have much different impressions now than I would have if I talked about it in the last episode. Um, and that game is Fuser, the new music game from Harmonix, uh, where you play a DJ and you uh, mix all kinds of different musical tracks from all different genres and create some awesome dance mix craziness. Um, the reason that my impressions would have been worse last week was that I'd only been playing it for a day and, um, I couldn't get it to work. Um, cause I, 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 I had wished there was a demo because I was like, it's 60 bucks. I don't know. I like harmonics and their music games, but I don't know if DJing is really going to be that fun. So I'd like to play a demo, but there was no demo. And then it went on sale for like 40 bucks. And I said, okay, fine. I like harmonics. I'll just treat myself for a Christmas present and buy this game. And I was regretting it. For days I regretted it. Because every time I tried to play, like the first tutorial is like, okay, here's how it works. You drop this record and this record and this record and this record. And then you drop another one and then you mix them and you mix different sounds from different genres and music and everything and it all sounds cool together. And it's like, okay, that's fine. And then the second stage of the tutorial was like, now you have to drop them on the downbeat to make it sound better. And the problem is, is that I could not get that to work. And I'm like, I have rhythm. Like, I have no problem with Rock Band. I have no problem with Dance Central. I can't sing, so I have to kind of fake it for, like, Rock Band and Sing Star and, and Lips and whatever. But, like, I have, I thought I had rhythm. Um, and the thing was, is that, like, and I was trying everything. Like, I was going by, like, the arrow on the record, I was going by, I tried going by the, the, the lines on the deck, um, I even tried just not looking at them and just going on by the beat. Nothing worked, I was failing every single drop and I would fail out of the game. And people were like, oh just turn on no fail mode, and I'm like, I shouldn't have to turn on no fail mode 
for like this basic tutorial level. Like that that is not <laughs> that's not a good sign because what's going to happen later. Um, so that was super frustrating, and I went into the calibration settings. Because the first thing it does when it starts is it's like, do you want to calibrate to your TV? And I said, well, yes, please. It's a music rhythm game. I need it, the audio and video to be properly synced so that I can, you know, with the controller so that the timing will be correct. And every time I recalibrated, I got different numbers, sometimes wildly different numbers, and none of them worked. And I was looking online. And people were like, oh yeah, I gave up and just started manually calibrating it. And I finally got to a point where I found a setting that worked. And I'm like, ugh, this is terrible. And I tried that too. Nothing was working. And I was ready to just give up and waste the $40. And thank God I did not. Um, because on like day three, I was getting frustrated. And I said, let me just calibrate one more time. And suddenly... I found a calibration setting that actually worked. Um, it's not amazing. I'm not getting perfect drops. Well, I'm, it's mostly good with the occasional perfect drop. So I'm like, th this is good. I will occasionally fail, but that's usually when, like, I'll miss, I'll miss a drop, but that's usually when, like, the time is running out and I panic and I just drop a record without waiting for the beat. Um, so I know that I could go in and maybe, like, tweak it even further manually to like get it to a point where I would get more perfects but I weirdly don't want to do that even though I've written down these numbers I don't want to touch it because I'm afraid if I go back to those numbers it won't work again and I'll be ass out and I, I know that's not logically possible it shouldn't do that but in my mind I'm just worried about that so I'm leaving it as is um, because now the game is playable I'm able to get enough I can get the drops to work good or perfect, and I can get through the stages and play each set, and like once or twice I'd fail out, and then I would just do it again. Um, but overall, I've been able to get decent scores, and it's fine. Um, I can get like two or three stars and get through a stage. And then I actually just did one where I got, uh, I got almost, I almost made it to four stars on my first try, and I was like, yeah. Although, I'm not sure exactly what you have to do to get to five stars. I think you have to just do like nothing but perfect drops. Like not even good drops. They have to be all perfect. Then you could get a five star rating. Uh, I don't think that's going to be actually possible for me. Uh, unless I go in and tweak the settings. But I am getting a little better at the game as I go on. Because um, now I'm able to play it. Um, so my impressions are very different. Last week I would have just ranted about it. This week I'm like, it's fine. Um, I will say that if you're thinking about it, um, I went with the, uh, PlayStation 4 version instead of the Switch version because while I liked the idea of having a portable music game, uh, I'm not going anywhere right now, so portability isn't really a plus any right now, at least not right now, and also somebody pointed out that, uh, the screen gets very busy and if you're playing portably, that's going to be hard to see. And I went, that is an exceptionally good point, so I'm going to go with the PlayStation version and just play on the TV. Also, I while I was looking up the calibration stuff and looking for other people online who'd had the same problem as me, people were saying how they had to recalibrate their Switch. Every time they played it on the Switch, if they were playing it portably, they'd have to recalibrate, and then when they put it on the TV, they'd have to recalibrate again, because the TV and the Switch are different. Um, so... Um, the game is fun, but I will say, if you're thinking about looking into it, uh, wait and see if they put out a demo, because um, it is not like their other games. This is not a casual, friendly party game, um, like Rock Band or Dan Dance Central, uh, where you can like just set it to easy and jump in, and people can just play, and it's fun, and you can pretend you're playing the guitar, and, you know, whatever. Here, there's no difficulty setting. I wish there kind of wish there was, but um, it's just there. It is, and you just mix the music, and it's it's really complicated. Like every set that you play introduces a new element. So, like there's fading, there's ejecting discs, there's you know 
dropping them on the pickup beat, there's uh, fading, uh, favoriting, there's creating your own loops of drum beats and synthesizers to add to the mix, creating your own music to put in there, um, and, and that's just, you know, I'm only on like the third promoter, on like the second stage of the third promoter, so like, there's more to go and there's more to add to this game, and I'm just like, it's just getting more and more and more complex. Um, so there's a lot going on, um, and you're constantly like being kept on your toes. So it isn't exactly like a casual, fun party game that you can just jump in and mix some funky music. I mean, there is a freestyle mode where you can just do what you want, um, but I don't know how user-friendly it is. It's not as casual as their other games. Um, but it is fun, and um, I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying it now because I can actually play it and get through the stages and get a decent score, if not an amazing score. Um, and who knows, maybe at some point Harmonix will update the game with like a difficulty slider so that you can like set it to be a little more forgiving about the timing of your drops. I don't know. Please, harmonics. Could I have that? That would be helpful for me. Um, so I'm gonna stop here because I feel like this one's getting a little long. But I did want to talk about Fuser finally, and uh, come back next episode and see if I have finished Uncharted 2, which is likely because I think I'm very, very, very close to the end. See you then. Bye. <laughs>